Welcome to episode 107 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing director and screenwriter Lawrence Roke. He recently wrote a Western starring Scott Eastwood, who is Clint Eastwood's son. So I'm talking to him today about that film. So stay tuned for that. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Over on iTunes, I've recently gotten a few nice reviews over the past six weeks or so, so I want to thank the folks who left those reviews. JLCC03, Real Girl Writer, Brit Michael Michael Onion and XX22XX. They all left me nice reviews on iTunes, so those are very much appreciated. Thank you guys for that. These iTunes reviews really are helpful. It helps get the podcast listened to in more places in iTunes, so it reaches a broader audience. Also, if you subscribe to the podcast, then you'll get the new episodes downloaded to your phone each week. So if you listen to this podcast, please do go into iTunes and just hit the subscribe button. That kind of just gives you better numbers and better positioning in the um, Apple iTunes store algorithm and you'll just show up in more places. So just getting, you know, widespread interest within the iTunes community is, is definitely helpful for me and the podcast. So if you don't, if you have a minute and you don't mind doing this, I do really appreciate it. Also, New Orleans Jack left me some constructive criticism on, in iTunes about the production value of the podcast. He seemed to think the content was good, but had issues with the production value. Obviously, I'd prefer someone not leave me a three-star review through iTunes, but I do think his criticism is fair. I am working behind the scenes to try and improve the audio quality. I'm not really an expert at you know audio recording, but I am just kind of messing with some of the settings, trying to get the levels better and that kind of stuff. So getting this kind of feedback is very important, and I do really appreciate it because if I get a lot of feedback, and I've gotten other people have emailed me and said, hey, you know, this part was not that good. I've had a friend that listens to the podcast. He mentioned that one of the tracks or one of the parts wasn't that great in the audio quality. So just getting this kind of feedback does sort of inform me on how I need to improve. So that kind of constructive feedback is very much appreciated. Again, I'd prefer people not leave it through iTunes, um, and I'm very open to email. So if you have some constructive feedback, please do just email it to me, info at sellingyourscreenplay.com. I will get those emails, and I will read them. And as I said, they really do help me just kind of keep my finger on the pulse of sort of what the audience is thinking. And a good example of this is recently I've gotten a bunch of emails where people say that they really like the section of the podcast where I talk about my own projects and give updates on my own projects. A lot of people have emailed me and said, hey, this is a neat section. I really enjoy hearing those updates. So I've kind of tried to expand that section. I didn't, when I started the podcast, I just thought, yeah, I'll throw it in there. I didn't know if people would find that interesting or not. And it seems like the feedback on that is positive. People like it. So I try and do more of it, and I'm trying to build out that section a little bit. So again, constructive criticism is always very much welcome. Please don't hesitate to just send it my way, info at sellingyourscreenplay.com. And again, one email, one, you know, note in iTunes or on YouTube or something, I don't necessarily react quickly or just um, overreact to one person's criticism. But when I see multiple people saying the same thing, not unlike when you're getting notes on your screenplay, when I see people, multiple people saying the same thing, I start to think maybe this is something that I do need to address. So if you have any criticism, comments, questions, anything really, just um, don't hesitate to reach out. A couple of quick notes. Any websites or links that I mentioned in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com and then just look, sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcasts, and then just look for episode number 107. I wanted to mention a link that was sent to me by Script Reader Pro. This is an, they've created a calendar for screenwriters. It's an excellent resource. I'm going to link to it in the show notes. And basically what they've done is they've gone through and gotten all the very popular contests, film festivals, all the stuff that is pertinent to a screenwriter, and they've created a calendar. So you can visually see by looking at this calendar when the deadlines for various contests are. I haven't necessarily looked through every single month at every 
every single listing, but just I looked through it quickly January, February, and the contests that they list for the most part, they're all reputable, good contests. So it's also just an excellent resource to just get some of these contests on your radar and um, just learn more about them. So I'm going to link to that in the show notes. Again, it's a nice calendar for screenwriters, all the deadlines and, and of all the contests and fellowships throughout the year. If you want my free guide, how to sell a screenplay in five weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide, how to write a professional log line and query letter, how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So a quick few words about what I'm working on. As I've been talking about the last couple of months, I finished another draft, my spoof comedy, sent it into the producers. I'm now just waiting to hear back from them and get any notes. I sent it to them last Wednesday. I'm recording this on Monday. I have not gotten any notes back to them. Um, not sure if that's a good sign or not. Hopefully my guess is it's not a good sign or a bad sign. My guess is they've just been busy, but, um, I haven't gotten any notes now. It's been five days, but hopefully they'll get back to me here in the next couple of days. And, um, you know, they were kind of hoping that the script was, you know, at least maybe like 90% there and then they can start to actually send it out to directors, start to maybe get some cast attached and, um, you know, maybe we'll have some table readings. There'll be some more rewrites on a script like this. Um, it'll definitely be continuously developed probably right up through post-production. I mean, they'll probably be, you know, making changes and editing, but certainly as we're shooting, um, probably be some rewriting, trying to make it funnier, beef up certain, um, comedy bits and stuff. So anyways, hopefully they like it enough to kind of take it to the next stage, which as I said, is getting it out to directors, potential directors who might, um, they, who they might bring in to direct it and, um, some cast, you know, getting that, getting out to actors. So big news, the day, today is the big day for my Kickstarter campaign. Again, I've been talking about this for months. I think I first mentioned this last July or August and have slowly been working up to this moment. Um, I launched it earlier today, which is Monday, January 18th, 2016. So if you're listening to this um, podcast, the campaign is live. It's going to run for 30 days, so it'll end on Tuesday, February 16th, 2016. So if you're listening to this many, many months in advance, um, you can still go to that Kickstarter page and check it out. Um, I've done a couple of things. Um, first, I'm really hoping that this obviously I'm really hoping that the Kickstarter campaign works out. I like Kickstarter as a model for a couple of reasons. And, um, you know, I'd be curious to hear what other people think, but I like the fact that you're basically taking your film directly to the, to the people. When you buy a DVD at Walmart or you watch a movie on Netflix, very little of that actual money that you're paying at, for the DVD at Walmart or your monthly subscription fee to Netflix, very little of that money actually trickles back to the filmmaker. And the nice thing about Kickstarter is I'm basically giving people the the download of the film and it goes directly to them. And any money that get that they pay for that download, 100%, I guess it's not 100% because I guess Kickstarter does take a small percentage, but I think Kickstarter takes like 5% or less. So it's a very small percentage. But the bottom line is like, you know, the vast majority of that, that money, like 90 plus percent goes directly to the filmmaker and not just to the filmmaker directly to the making of the film. So I like it as a model, um, you know, just building it. Obviously there are some challenges building an audience and getting people engaged enough to actually donate money to it. Um, but if it works, I think it can be a great model for me and a great model, hopefully for other people. I'm going to document the whole thing here on the podcast. So if other people are thinking of running a Kickstarter, they can come back to these episodes and listen to them and kind of see what I did. You know, even if I fail, hopefully there'll be some good, some good, um, wisdom and, and some lessons learned in that, um, in this process. I've tried to do some interesting things with my Kickstarter campaign. First, I've linked from the Kickstarter campaign page to a PDF of the screenplay. So if you want to read the full screenplay, it's available online for everyone to read. A lot of times people, when they're creating their Kickstarter campaign, they make the screenplay like a reward. Like it's like usually a very low level reward, donate $5 and we'll send you a copy of the screenplay. I just thought most of the users, most of my audience, um, and the people who are, are listening to this podcast, certainly, but most of the people who I'm sort of in touch with are screenwriters. So I thought this would be an interesting thing for screenwriters to see. So I just 
decided to just put the screenplay out there for anybody. You don't have to give any money. You just go to the Kickstarter campaign, click a link, and you will get the PDF um, version of the screenplay. You can download it. You can read it on your, your Kindle or your um, your iPad or your iPhone or whatever, your computer, whatever you want. Um, it's just available as, as a PDF. Hopefully people will read the script. I mean, this is my thinking. Um, hopefully people will read the script and think it's a cool project and then come back and donate a few bucks. You know, hopefully there are some people that maybe they're on the fence, whether they want to donate, then they read the script. Say, hey, I kind of like the script. I really would like to see this movie get made. And um, so hopefully then they'll come back and, and give a few bucks. So if you don't have any money, you don't want to donate, no problem. There's definitely some value in going and checking this thing out because, as I said, you can check out the screenplay. And it might give a little more context as I talk about this. I mean, I'm going to be talking about the, the movie pretty much the whole year, assuming the Kickstarter campaign is, is halfway successful. Then I'll be making the movie. And, and it'll take a, a year before this movie is made. We're in January now. So, you know, the better part of 2016, this will be probably the, the single biggest project that I work on. So reading the screenplay now might give you some context as I talk about, you know, pre-production, production, post-production. The video I made, um, this is another thing which I think is, um, I, I thought long and hard about it. Hopefully it's it's an interesting part of the Kickstarter campaign. The video that I made for the Kickstarter campaign, it's two minutes long. I think it's maybe two minutes and five seconds. So it's just a hair over two minutes. The first minute of this video is a teaser trailer from the film, and that's just literally a scene that I took from the film. I did take it and kind of rewrite it to make it more dramatic, and because you don't get the the full context, um, you don't get the full context sort of from how the, the script plays out. Um, I kind of tweaked it a little bit, as I said, just to make it more dramatic in the moment. Um, but it's basically a scene from the movie. It's a one minute, what I consider to be a very tense, dramatic scene from the movie, which I thought was cool. And then um, the second minute is actually me, you know, just pitching the Kickstarter campaign, talking a little bit about the film and why I wrote the script. Everyone said keep the um, video, like all the advice I read, all the advice I got was everyone said just keep the video as short as possible. People are not going to watch a nine-minute Kickstarter video. It's like I think 90 seconds was what people were really recommending, and I cut, 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 um, and tried to get this thing down to 90 seconds, but I just was not able to. Um, I don't know. I think everything that I left in there is is pretty pertinent and important, so I just couldn't really – cut it that much more but I think two minutes is short enough I'm hoping anyways that people will watch the whole thing but I think a lot of people put up five minutes you know eight minutes ten minutes Kickstarter videos and I think for the most part people won't watch those so hopefully a two minute video is short enough people will watch the whole thing since most people um, who listen to my podcast um, are screenwriters I tried to create some screenwriting centric um, rewards um you know it's i'm doing some of the, some of the typical things i'm giving away you know producer and co-producer and associate producer credits and those credits you know if you want to get a producer credit on the film you can definitely get that through the kickstarter campaign but um what I did specifically for screenwriters was i'm going to give away a story consultant credit um Obviously, I'm limiting the number of this. It wouldn't make sense to have, you know, a thousand story consultants on this project. So there's only going to be a limited number um, of story consultant credits that I give out. Um, and this credit will appear at the end of the film, obviously, and it will also appear on IMDb. So it's a great way for a screenwriter to get an actual, you know, writing credit, a story consultant credit. And here's kind of how what I'm thinking is going to work. Once the budget is locked and I start to get some of the key cast in place, I'm going to take one final pass on the screen screenplay there's going to be some logistical tweaks i'm sure with different actors there's going to be some you know tweaks probably some budgetary tweaks um depending on how much money i have i may open it up a little bit more if the budget is super super tight i may have to lock it down and condense some things um so those those are the kinds of tweaks i'm thinking but what i'm thinking is i'm going to have this um these people who who get this story consultant credit so the idea is um, you're going to read the screenplay. Uh, the screenplay is online. Anybody can read it. So you know, you'll get the screenplay and you'll read the screen the, the script, and then you will give me um, credit. You'll give me notes, and I will incorporate some of those notes into the screenplay. You know, obviously, if I think think that they're good notes. Um, so you'll basically be a story consultant on the film. So I think it's a very um, excellent way to get a writing credit on a produced film for a screenwriter. Um, I also think it could really make the film better. You know, if I get you know some really good feedback some really good ideas on how to make scenes cool or how to make the script better I'm always open for that so if you want to get a writing credit um, this is a great way to do it and hopefully that will be interesting to to some screenwriters who are listening to this so 
Anyway, please do check out my Kickstarter campaign. Again, I'm going to link to it in the show notes. If you think the project looks cool and you're able, please do donate. If you're not in a position to donate, but you still think the project looks cool, looks cool, please do pass it along to your friends and family. Retweet it, share it on Facebook, email it to any friends you have. All of these social media shares really do add up. You know, you just never know how people are going to connect to some material. And, you know, you may not be able to be in a position to donate money, but, you know, you might pass it along to a friend who sees the teaser trailer and thinks this looks like a cool project and, you know, is able to donate money. So any help you can give, whether that's money or just, um, you know, sharing, sharing it and passing it along is very much appreciated. So thank you in advance for that. So wish me luck. As I said, I will be giving updates. Um, on the campaign as it goes along you can obviously go to the kickstarter page and kind of look at what's going on and and i think you can even leave notes and and um i can create like a faq page so if you have any questions at all please do go to the kickstarter campaign and ask those questions i'm happy to answer any questions about the film um any film any questions you have so now let's get into the main segment today i'm interviewing lawrence roke here is the interview welcome lawrence to the selling your screenplay podcast i really appreciate you coming on the show with me yeah, thank you for having me, Ashley. It's a, it's a pleasure. So let's dig right into your latest film, Diablo, starring Scott Eastwood. Maybe to start out, you can give us a quick pitch uh, um, or a logline for the film. Well, Diablo is about a young man suffering from PTSD. Um, he's a Civil War veteran. He has to go down the trail into northern New Mexico to get back his kidnapped wife um, before he unravels and uh, loses his, um, his mind basically. Okay. And maybe you can kind of tell us where did this idea or this story come from? What was sort of the genesis of it? Well, you know, I, I always wanted to um, shoot a Western and I was originally um, attracted to the idea of doing a California coastal Western. Part of my early concept for Diablo was I wanted to do the end of the West, the last cowboy, the one that made it to the West Coast and, and where the era was dying. But as the story evolved, it kind of became more about the PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and the psychological issues that the character was suffering. Um, and I wanted to focus on that. So we ended up shooting the movie um, set in a uh, Colorado going in southern Colorado going into northern Mexico landscape. Okay, okay. And one of the things I, I like to ask the writers of scripts is, and, and you kind of gave me an answer, but maybe a direct question will give us a little more insight. It sounds kind of like you had this idea for a story and then the character emerged for that. Would you say the story came first or the character came first? You know, it was, it was the setting, actually. Um, it was the setting that came first, but anytime you're developing a screenplay um, and, or developing a story, there's always an evolution of the uh, of, of the uh, of uh, the original concept that you have. And once we created the character of Jackson, when I say we, I had a partner, a writing partner on, on Diablo, uh, Carlos de los Rios, um, who is, is my writing partner on all of my films. Once we had that character of Jackson, we were able to kind of build off of that, and then that became the story. But originally, I, you know, I was looking for this kind of genetic quoi of, like, the 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 end of the west and um you know just kind of that romantic um western vibe um at the time i was living in carmel california and um i was just north of big sur area it's a very beautiful picturesque uh, mountainous area on the ocean and that was really the original inspiration it's like wow it'd be really fun to make a movie in this environment and that kind of touches on this kind of lifestyle it seems lost um, to me. Okay, so maybe we can go through just your writing process a little bit. I know a lot of people who listen to this podcast have writing partners. Maybe you can talk a little bit about sort of how your collaboration with Carlos works. Um, are you guys in the same room? What tools do you use? Do you outline and then divide up scenes? Just a little insight in sort of your process. You know, it's, it's basically a three-part process. We do a heavy, heavy discussion about the story. Um, I'll come up with the concept of the story. I'll bring it to him um, and use him as my sounding board, really, basically, to to suss out whether I'm going in a direction that we feel is solid. Um, the main number one thing is when you have a concept is you want to analyze it. Are you bringing something new? Are you bringing something relevant to the table? So that's the first thing we do. 
Secondly, once we decide that we want to work on a concept and that it's something that we really want to engage in, we generally try and get in the room together, at least for a couple days, um, because we can do the work on the phone, but it's good to be in the actual physical room with your writing partner. Um, there's an unquantifiable connection that you have with the person you're working with in some odd conversation after a cup of coffee that had nothing to do with the actual screenplay, you'll find some sort of little magic nugget that all of a sudden distills your story and, and moves you forward. And, and that just comes from being in the same room. So number one, we conceptualize. Number two, then we really heavily discuss the story. Uh, and then we, we come up with a beat sheet in, in part two of the process. The beat sheet basically, um, as most writers know, is, is um, as an example, uh, a sheet from one to, say, a hundred that covers each individual beat of your story. You know, the lead character wakes up and he discovers his wife is gone. Uh, the lead character the next day decides to go after his wife and um, avenge her kidnapping and so on and so forth until you're at the very end of the story. You know, doing the beat sheet with Carlos really helps me get my mind clear in terms of where my story's going, um, where I'm coming from, and how I can improve it. Once the beat sheet is done, then um, historically he has done the first draft, uh, but on this next screenplay that he and I are working on after Diablo, I'll do the first draft, which is something new for us. But one of us will come up with the first draft, and then we'll toss it to the other person, and then we'll just keep refining it back and forth, back and forth, over and over, until finally by the time we're done actually filming the movie, the screenplay has gone through, you know, 50 to 60 different iterations. Mm -hmm. uh, those aren't full rewrites, but they are different versions of the draft. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder, just to give us a sort of sense of the scope, um, I find newer writers spend way too, too too little time with the outline and probably you know, they get into the actual writing of the script a little bit too early. So maybe you can just give us a sense of how much time you spent just in terms of like days, weeks and months on each section of this, you know, concept, beat sheet and then the writing of the script. Well, I mean, you know, writing is fun and we all want to dive in and, and start writing our screenplay right away. Um, especially when you're a new writer. It's like being a new filmmaker in film school. What do you mean they aren't going to give you the camera right away and let me start making films? Well, you know, there's a process to, you know, making a screenplay, and there's a lot of homework that needs to be done. Um, it's actually a very mechanical process. There's a lot of homework that needs to be done before you can really figure out where your story's going and, and what you're trying to tell. So sometimes I do suggest for newer writers hey, just go out and uh, start writing your idea and see what you come up with. Uh, sometimes you just need to get it on paper to feel your story. But mm -hmm. if you really want to um, take an efficient approach, you know, um, the real, as they say, the devil's in the details. And the details lay in the outline and all the preparation you do before you start writing. Um, it's incredibly helpful to a writer if you do have that beat sheet and you have um, everything lined out because by the time you sit down and you start writing, you really know where to go. And mm -hmm. that can really help you out in terms of, um, number one, telling the story that you set out to tell, and number two, um, doing it in an efficient manner where you don't constantly get caught in rewrites and your story starts kind of falling apart in front of your eyes. The beat yeah. sheet allows you to have a structure. And so for me... Um, you know, I spend sometimes upward of half a year just beat sheeting out the film and um, doing the research on how I want the story to go. Um, but for me, personally, that's where the beauty of writing lies, is kind of conceptualizing everything ahead of time so that when you do sit down, you've got a real direction. Yeah, yeah. So then you might spend six months just doing the beat sheet, but then how long does it take you to actually write up the script? Then it takes you like a couple of months to actually write up the first draft? No, I mean, sometimes it can happen within a week. It can happen I within see. a couple of days because that's the magic of it. If you do a lot of your homework ahead of time and you really figure out your characters, 
sometimes you start writing and it just all really just flows right out of you. Um, and it, it really helps, you know, doing your research ahead of time, really figuring out your story just to combat writer's block. Um, yeah. You very rarely get it when you kind of have everything figured out in your mind. You're more concerned about mechanically just writing it and getting it out onto the page. And then once you have it on the page, uh, because you followed that structure, then it's more about like improving the scene and making the dialogue better rather than yeah. going, hey, did I go in a completely wrong direction here? And having that um, question in the back of your mind, like, am I on the right, am I on the right path? You know. Yeah, yeah. So that's good advice. I heard a quote once, um, I'm almost done my play. All I have to do is write it. Um, and I think that speaks to that. Let's talk just briefly. Um, I had another writer on doing um, a Western. And I wonder, are Westerns kind of in vogue with um, Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight coming out? Um, did you get any pushback from producers and distributors that maybe Westerns you know, might not sell overseas or anything like that? You know, it's, it's very interesting. You're bringing up the exact... Um, obstacles I had when when I set out to do Diablo. Um, you know, to answer your first question, yes, Westerns are in vogue right now. Um, and I think they will continue to be because there's some really unique ones that you're starting to see come out. You've got Hateful Eight, which obviously from the great Quentin Tarantino um, is, um, you know, uh, shot in glorious 70 millimeter. That says uh -huh. it all, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it a full-blown Quentin Tarantino road show. And it's a Western. And um, it's great that he dived into the genre and, and is embracing it. And I think that that's going to kind of open things up for the other filmmakers to really get their movies to be seen. Um, there's Bone Tomahawk coming out with Kurt Russell. I've heard nothing but good stuff about that. Uh, Jane Got a Gun. Hopefully I got that correct with Natalie Portman. Um, she's a fantastic actor and couldn't imagine her getting involved in any kind of bad script. So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. So a lot of, a lot of, oh, and then we can't forget the Revenant, uh, which is the Hugh yeah, Glass yeah. story, a true story. And, um, that's questionably a Western, but I'm going to put it in the genre. I know Alejandro Inaritu, uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, doesn't want to see it as a Western, but it is, I think. It's shot in the West it's of that era. Um, so, you know, it's all a heating up of the genre that's going to allow the public to kind of take a look at Westerns and go, hey, maybe we'll watch a few of these and, and enjoy them. But, you know, it's a highly enjoyable genre of film, and, um, and it's one that I really enjoy delving into and making yeah, one. Yeah. So how can people see Diablo? Do you know the release schedule for it? Yeah, it releases January 8th um, across the nation uh, in select theaters. It's not going to be a lot of theaters. Um, but really, you know, the uh, digital portals are always the best to see these um, smaller films. If you can catch it on the big screen, absolutely do. Uh, it is booking in some larger theaters across the country. Um, but Diablo very likely will be more of a cult hit, uh, and you'll probably best be able to get it off iTunes, uh, Netflix, uh, or one of those guys after it does its theatrical run. But it will okay. be in theaters January 8th. I can't wait. Perfect, perfect. And I always like to just end the interviews by um, asking the, the guests to maybe give out their Twitter handle or Facebook page, anything you feel comfortable sharing, just in case people want to follow you and just kind of keep up with what you're doing. Absolutely. I encourage um, you know all new writers and, and lovers of film to reach out to me. Um, I do communicate with people on Facebook and Twitter. Um, my Twitter handle is at Lawrence Rock. That's L A W R E N C E. My last name is R O E C K. So at Lawrence Rock. And um, same for Facebook. You know, reach out and uh, say hi. I just want to mention two things I'm doing at Selling Your Screenplay to help screenwriters find producers who are looking for material. First, I've created a monthly newsletter that will be sent directly to producers. Every member of SYS Select can submit one logline per newsletter. I went and emailed my large database of producers and asked them if they would like to receive this monthly newsletter of pitches. So far, I have well over 200 producers who have signed up to receive it. These producers are hungry for material and happy to read scripts from new writers. So if you want to participate in this pitch newsletter and get your script into the hands of hungry producers, sign up at Selling Your Screenplay Select.
www.ethanpodcast.com. And secondly, I've partnered with one of the premier paid screenwriting leads sites so I can syndicate their leads to SYS select members. There are lots of great paid leads coming in each week from our partner. Recently, I've been getting 10 to 12 high quality leads per week. These are producers and production companies who are actively looking to buy material or are actively looking to hire screenwriters for a specific project. If you sign up at SYS Select, you'll get these leads emailed directly to you a few times per week. These leads run the gamut from producers, production companies looking for a specific type of spec script to producers looking to hire a screenwriter to write up one of their ideas or maybe write up some other material. Maybe they've, the producer has optioned a book and needs it turned into a screenplay. There are shorts, there are features, there are producers looking for TV, there are producers looking for web series, web series pilots. It's a huge array of different types of projects. Again, for the most part, these are paid leads. So there will be some payment. You will, there will be professional credits and you will make some money. And these leads are exclusive to our partner who is generating them and obviously SYS Select members. To sign up, go to sellingyourscreenplayselect.com. I recently set up a success stories page too. I always get questions. Well, how many people have succeeded through your service? How many people have, you know, options scripts? So I set up a success stories page um, to highlight some of the success stories over the years through S the various SYS select services. So if you want to check that out, go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash success. Again, to read all of our success pages stories, go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash success. And if you've had any success with any of the SYS select services, please do get in touch. I love hearing these stories. You know, if you have something in production and it's come about through one of the SYS select services, I'd love to have you on the podcast and, um, you know, you can tell your story. I think these stories are inspiring. Um, and it's just great to give back and to share with the SYS community, what kind of stuff you've had success with. Um, I know it can be interesting for me and, and interesting for the listeners. So if you've had some sex success, through SYS Select, please do um, just email me and um, and tell me how what happened and um, kind of how it's going. So in the next episode of the podcast, um, I'm going to be interviewing Robert Palmer and Michael Weiss. They are a pa pair of writers and directors. They recently did a low-budget found footage horror film called I Am Alone. We really dig into the details of how this film came about, all the things that they did. They did a Kickstarter campaign. Um, I think their first Kickstarter campaign actually failed, then they did another one, but they shot it out in Colorado, so they talk about how they got this location. They got this small town in Colorado kind of on board. Um, there's a lot of really interesting sort of nuts and bolts details details about how to go about creating a low budget film. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. To wrap things up, I do like to just touch on some of the things from the interview. This was a quick interview today, so um, I don't have a lot of comments about it. But the one thing that struck me um, the most about Lawrence, and I've talked about this a lot on the podcast, but I think it's um, worth repeating. The um, the part where he talked about his process, you know, six months of outlining and then a week or a month, you know, less than a month, he said, even sometimes in a week or two, he could write the whole script. I think that's really a great thing to think about in your own, when you're creating your own process, everyone does have their own process and I don't in any way want to make it seem like, um, you know, this is the one right way of doing it. Everyone's process is a little bit different, but I will say this, when I talk to working screenwriters, a lot of them talk about all the preparation, you know, many, many months of preparation. Is it a 50, 50 split? I mean, in the case of what Lawrence is saying, six months versus, you know, less than a month to actually write the screenplay. This is my process. I spend a lot of time doing the outline. Probably, I would say maybe mine is more of a 50-50 type of a process, a break, 50% of the time outlining, 50% of the time writing. But one of the things that Lawrence said, which I totally agree with, was, you know, if you have the outline and the structure properly thought through, then you're not writing scenes and pages that you just have to throw out what you just go in a completely wrong direction. You come up with the outline and if you're going to go off the outline, this happens to me. I'm sure it happens to a lot of other writers. I will get to a point where I'm going on the outline and I realize this is not working. I need to go off of this outline. And what I typically will do is go back to the outline and do make those changes to the outline so that you still have a good outline. Once you get off your outline and start going in, in other directions, you don't have that macro view anymore. You're, you're in final draft and you're just writing and it's sometimes hard to tell even for the most experienced screenwriters if they're getting off track or not. So looking at the outline, you know, 
you can outline your entire, entire script. I mean, the note cards is kind of the classic way to do it. I don't use a note card so much anymore. I'm very fast on the computer, but in you know, and with these big monitors these way these days, I can see my entire screenplay on my screen, you know, on, on like two pages or, or three pages of my computer screen. So I can kind of look at the entire script and all the main beats in one view. And it gives you a much better, you know, sometimes you can cross scenes off, you reorder the scenes, um, but you kind of have a much better idea of like what scenes came before. it. Once you're in final draft, at least I find this, once I'm in final draft, I can't remember what was two scenes before or 20 pages before and it becomes very difficult to start making structural changes inside a final draft it's not impossible and I'm sure there are people out there that that do it and they make it work um, but I find it difficult so for me what Lawrence said it really resonated with me um, and as I said I think right now I might be at like a 50 50 split but I keep thinking I should spend more time actually outlining um, the other thing about it is I find the writing process, and again, Lawrence kind of touched on this. I find the writing process the most difficult part of the screen of screenwriting. When you're in final draft, you're trying to get the dialogue out. You're trying to write character descriptions, action descriptions, and so if I have the scene pretty well thought out in an outline form on an index card, or basically in that same format where you've really thought through the scene, you kind of understand what's there, then you can really kind of get the polish on it. You can tweak the dialogue and you can tweak those. You can spend the time as opposed to trying to think, what is this scene all about? You already know what it's about. You already basically know what's supposed to happen. What's the beginning of the scene? What's the end of the scene? Then it's just a matter of kind of putting the polish and trying to make it as good as possible. And, and very typically, um, when I'm done a first draft, um, it'll be a pretty coherent draft of a screenplay. It's not, um, a lot of people talk about these vomit drafts and just getting it out there. And um, most of the time, my first drafts, I mean, they're coherent and they make sense. And um, again, most of what I do um, in terms of rewriting is going back and doing that polish, trying to create things. Sometimes there are mistakes are made. You have a character that's not quite working or you take a slight, a slight you know, something didn't work in the execution and um, you got to go back to the outline and, and rework things but anyways that's the tip for the day I'd say um, I think Lawrence really summed it up so I'd go back and, and listen to that especially if, again I don't want to make it sound like this is the only process that works I know that there are other people that write in a different way but um, if you're having trouble with structure if you're having trouble you know you're great with character you're great with dialogue this is a great way to maybe step back and um, and write something that is more structured and and kind of has a, a bigger you know works on that structure level Anyway, that's the show. Thank you for listening.